Hey campers and welcome to the Summer Submarine. I'm so glad you're joining us. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit special for our Shark Adventure Week. Today we're going to be doing a virtual dissection of a dogfish shark. So I'm going to start by describing some of the external features and then we're going to cut in and I'm going to show you some of the important parts of a shark's anatomy. Now even though this is a dogfish shark and it's small compared to something a little bit more exciting like a bull shark or a great white, it's going to have all the same body parts. So let's go ahead and, and cut in. So on the outside there are a few things to note. Um, when we're looking at something anatomically so we know where we're referring to, um, there are a few special terms. So first, um, we're going to go with the rostral and caudal ends. The rostral end is the forward part, whereas caudal is the back. So the tail fin is also called the caudal fin. And the caudal fin is important for generating movement for swimming. Now some other important features are uh, knowing the difference between dorsal and ventral. So the dorsal side is this top part. The dorsal fin is something you probably recognize if you've ever seen the movie Jaws. Uh, the dorsal fin is responsible for helping stabilize the shark when it swims. Now on the other side is its belly, and this is what's called the ventral side. And you can see it's been cut into already, and that's because these sharks are specially prepared for dissection, so they've been injected with some coloring, so you can tell um, which parts of the shark are the circulatory system, so you can see those veins uh, really nicely. Now another thing to note on here, oh and this is interesting, is whether it's a male or a female shark. Now ordinarily we get male sharks, however every now and then you do get a female. And the reason they try to get male sharks is because dogfin, uh, dogfish tend to have really long pregnancies and so they try to avoid getting any males. These guys have a pregnancy that can last up to two years. So they try to get males but this right here is a female. And the way that I know that is because they don't have any claspers. So a male would have two finger-like projections right about here, um, but because it lacks those, we know this right here is a female. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut on the ventral side, and I'm gonna use the cut that is already here. Now something interesting about the dogfish's skin and any shark's skin is that it's kind of sandpaper-like. And that's because all sharks and rays, which they are related to, have a skin that's made up of something called dermal denticles. So they don't have just regular fish scales. Um, these dermal denticles would be rough. You can kind of hear it maybe um, if I scratch over it. And the reason they have these dermal denticles is because it makes them swim faster and quieter in the water. It helps them um, create kind of uh, a little bit of drag as they swim, but the drag they create with their dermal denticles creates like a bubble of water around them, which reduces overall drag. And it makes them fast and quiet, which is important for a predator. Sharks were actually the original sandpaper. Before we had sandpaper, um, people in medieval times used shark skin as sandpaper to make furniture. Okay, so I'm gonna cut in on each side so you can see a little bit better. And one of the first things you might notice is that it doesn't have any bones. So sharks belong to a group of fish called cartilaginous fish, which means that their entire bodies, their entire skeleton is made up of cartilage. Uh, cartilage is the same thing we have in our noses and our ears. So it's kind, of, it's kind of tough, but it's more flexible than bone. The hardest parts of a shark's skeleton are going to be its jaws and teeth, and the area around its heart and the area near its brain. Um, the teeth and jaws are the only parts that aren't made up of cartilage. Now the first thing I want to point out here is this really large organ that has two lobes. Any guesses what it is? This right here is the shark's liver. So sharks do not have a swim bladder. A swim bladder is an organ that most fish would have that's filled with gas and it's used to control the buoyancy of the fish in the water column. But because sharks do not have a swim bladder, uh, they rely on a fatty liver to help them control their buoyancy. And so um, fat is, is fairly 
uh, is fairly good at helping these sharks float. And so this is really the only place that a shark is going to store fat. They might store a little extra fat in their muscles, but for the most part, um, you'll never really see a shark with fat anywhere else. And so that actually affects the way sharks feed. Um, we actually only feed our sharks here at the aquarium twice a week. And we feed them about 1% to 3% of their body weight at each feeding uh, because the only place they're storing fat is in this liver. Now, one way that you could actually test the way a shark's liver works is by pouring some vegetable oil in water. You would actually see that it floats. So it has two lobes. So I'm going to cut these out of the way. And see them up close. Now a shark's digestive system is pretty different than ours. Um, it's a lot more straight. So it's kind of like a big long tube that runs all the way down. So this is the upper portion of the stomach right here. And it runs all the way down to here, where it becomes the intestines. And this curvy area right here is just like what we have. It's the duodenum. And it's the entrance to the small intestine. Attached to the intestines is this organ called the spleen. And you and I have a spleen as well. It's important to our immune function, but in a shark it serves a, a slightly different purpose. Because humans have, uh, because humans have bone marrow, that's where we uh, produce all of our red blood cells. But because sharks don't have bones the way you and I do, uh, they have to produce their red blood cells elsewhere, and so they use their spleens to do it. So I will cut apart the spleen. You can see it here. You can see all that dye in it. Those are all just blood vessels. You can imagine the part that's responsible for producing blood is going to have a lot of blood vessels. So that makes a ton of sense. So I'm going to cut into the stomach. Something fun about cutting into the stomach so we can see if the shark has eaten anything recently. I'm going to cut it out. Now, sometimes when we dissect a shark, we can see a whole fish. Sometimes you'll see partially digested food, and sometimes it's empty. It feels like it's probably pretty empty. But I will cut it open and check. So it doesn't look like there's anything in it. You can see a little bit of fish scales. Somebody ate a little bit recently. But something worth noting is that it has lots of little folds. It's really wrinkly. And that's because that's where uh, nutrients are going to get absorbed. So the more surface area, the more folds there are, the more places um, on, along the inside of the stomach and along the inside of the intestines there will be for nutrient absorption to take place. The way that humans have um, add their surface area is by having cilia, which are tiny little hair-like projections, and they just accomplish the same thing. We have uh, a lot more surface area that way. So this is the intestines. And it's already kind of open. So I'll go ahead and open it up. You can see there's some partially digested food in there. And something really interesting about sharks' intestines is near the end they have something called a spiral valve. I'm not sure if you can really tell, but it kind of coils up really, really tightly there. And that is, again, to add surface area. So whereas you and I have an intestinal tract that kind of spirals back and forth. Um, 
the spiraling takes place internally. So it's not going to have a really, really long intestine. Uh, it's just going to spiral internally, coil around like that. This is actually the first female shark I've dissected this summer. So now that I've cut these, the um, digestive tract out of the way, one more thing that we can point out right here is something that all sharks have, but that's really important to animals like our bull sharks, which make the aquarium so special. This right here in between my fingers is called the rectal gland. And the rectal gland is responsible for something called osmoregulation. And osmoregulation is just a fancy way of saying it's how the shark controls the amount of salt content in their blood. And this is what enables bull sharks to swim between freshwater and salt water. So um, osmoregulation allows them to control the salt content such that they can swim into freshwater and retain a lot of salt in their blood to make up for the lack of salt water around them. Now, every single shark has a rectal gland, but only bull sharks are good enough uh, at using their rectal gland to swim into fresh water. Um, most sharks don't have the same capability or same osmoregulation capabilities as other sharks like our bull sharks. And then another feature worth noting is the kidneys. So you can't really see it, especially in a, in a female shark. It's a little bit darker um, right here is where the kidneys are. So the kidneys are not like a little bean-shaped organ in a shark the way they are in a person uh, or most mammals. You can see all the way along there that dark tube is part of the kidneys. Um, so it's just a big long tube that runs all the way down the shark. Okay, So I'm going to cut out more of the liver so that we can see the heart. And like I mentioned, the heart is going to be protected by a really thick layer of cartilage. It almost feels like bone. You can start to see the heart right there. You can also see it's protected by this really thick layer of cartilage right here. I'm going to cut the heart out so you can see it. Now, sharks don't breathe with lungs like you and I which means their heart's going to be structured a little bit differently. A person's heart has four chambers, and two of those chambers are dedicated solely to going to the lungs, and two of those chambers deliver blood to and from the rest of the body. So the parts of the heart that are exiting and going towards the lungs or towards the body, um, half of it's going to be, you're going to have oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood, right? So as something enters the body, it's going to be oxygenated. As it returns from the body back into the heart, it's going to be deoxygenated. And when it goes to the lungs, it's picking up oxygen. So it's going to be deoxygenated as it goes towards the lungs and oxygenated as it comes back from the lungs. But in a shark, there are no lungs. So how many chambers do you think a shark has? It's still going to have oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, but it's not going to be picking it up from lungs. So if you look inside of shark heart, you can see it only has two chambers. So there's two hollow chambers, one on this side, one on that side. And then lastly, I'll show you guys how a shark does breathe. So externally, you have the gill slits. And that allows oxygen, and that allows um, the shark to breathe outwards. But they take water in either through their mouth or through a specialized airway called a spiracle. 
Um, and many animals have spiracles. The spiracles are right here on top. Looks like a hole. Um, and you can see them on, on larger sharks as well, too. Um, but it's just another way for the, for the shark to get water into its body because sometimes they'll be laying in the sand uh, where it's not always easy to intake water. So they bring it in and it passes over the gill arches uh, for gas exchange to take place, similar to the way that we breathe. But they're breathing dissolved oxygen rather than air like you and I. So here are all the gill arches. You can see it has many different folds. And for the same reason that the stomach has lots and lots of little folds, the gill arches have several folds and layers themselves so that there's maximum uh, surface area for breathing.